A senior advocate of Nigeria, SAN, Professor Paul Ananaba, has advocated for all election petitions to be concluded within 60 days and before swearing in. The Supreme Court had on Thursday affirmed President Bola Tinubu's election more than 71 days after the Opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the Labour Party, LP, launched their appeals seeking to invalidate his February, February 25, 2023 win. But Ananaba is not happy with the length of the legal toss who and believes election petitions should be concluded before swearing in. His comment comes over 100 days after Tinubu was sworn in as Nigeria's president. Joining us live is legal practitioner Habas Idium. Ah, uh, barrister, welcome to Plus Politics. Uh, a technical glitch. Uh, we, we'll go on a short break and come back. Oh, uh, hello, barrista. Are you are you back now? Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for for grazing, grazing the show. Uh, what's the response to the suggestion by the senior advocate of Nigeria? It's eminently desirable in uh, the best circumstances to have all election petitions concluded definitely before swearing in. But our judiciary has uh, significant challenges uh, which would make that uh, tricky to achieve. So. Um, as compared to other jurisdictions or other countries, um, our judges still take evidence longhand. They have to write everything down. And um, uh, the, the challenges of proving election malpractices, which you have to bring witnesses from polling units, uh, individual, po individual polling units, it's, 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 a, it's a huge task to assemble all of your witnesses across the country and to present all of that evidence within 60 days. So therein lies the challenge we have in Nigeria. And um, uh, if we tweak the law to enable uh, petitioners deal with fewer witnesses, then that could, that could be achieved. Yes, I said it would be very difficult to achieve without a, a fundamental uh, amendment of the law with regards to witnesses that the petitioner needs to put forward to establish his case. Okay. Could it be the fact that um, the adversarial nature of our, of our jurisprudence across, you know, uh, maybe on election matters, maybe we should be going in the direction of in, uh, practicing or using something more in, inquisitorial, where... Uh, an entity like INEC will not be seen itself, defending itself, but helping the judicial authority to establish the veracity of what, what really happened. Because it does seem what we practice now, if you are not, if your pocket is not loaded, you may not even have the wherewithal to garner all the uh, requisite evidences you need to invalidate, uh, invalidate the pronouncement of victory but uh, for somebody else, what do you think? Absolutely, you you have you've made a fine point there. Um, however, there are benefits to the adversarial system as well as the inquisitorial system. What we have as a major drawback is the fact that um, the adversarial system, like you do think that, considering what's before us and our recent experience. We should be lawmakers should be looking at reducing that time frame via the constitution, via a constitutional amendment, to say all of these matters should be concluded, and for the evidence that should be given, maybe it could be an abridged uh, version of this evidence, so that you know petitioners can quickly prove their case, and um, uh, verdicts could be given well before swearing in. Some some uh, persons have also. I uh, suggested the idea that uh, the elections could be held in say nine months before swearing in. I know for so for some people that in itself is off putting. That is too is too much of uh, a gap between when elections come. But I know that 
the, the, the polities may not be many, but in, say, uh, one of these Latin American countries, it's taking about six months. Even in Nigeria, we have three months before the president-elect or the governor-elect uh, are sworn in. So we, maybe we should just elongate the time a little bit more, say five to six months, so that all legal disputations and litigations would have been settled before swearing in. What do you think about that? Absolutely. That sounds like a, a good idea if, um, if it's put to test. However, uh, there are significant uh, uh, obstacles to, to getting that uh, on the way. For instance, why would you win an election and then it would take nine months before you were sworn in? I mean, we, we know what happens in Nigeria as soon as a victor is declared winner. Um, all governance stops. So, for instance, if a governor has uh, a governor elect has won the election, he immediately starts to operate as the prior government. It will, it will bad dock, enough. It will then dock the incumbent administration, yes. and nothing tangible Absolutely. will be achieved. I quite agree yes. with you. Uh, but what Absolutely. about a barrister? We may just be cheating eczema at the expense of uh, skin cancer. Uh, when we are not even looking deeply into some of the recommendations of the Ways, Ways uh, uh, Committee, because some of the fundamental uh, causes of the problems we tend to have are quite more than um, quite more than the votes cast or the activities of the day of election itself. For example, three days ago, the incumbent president nominated for Senate's confirmation 10 national electoral commissioners. And, you know, if you really look at it, the, the president is also a partisan at some point. These people will be involved in, uh, in, in manage managing an election that he may be part of. Uh, I, I, what, what's your take of that? Well, unfortunately, uh, it, it is the prerogative of the president to nominate uh, resident electoral commissioners uh, by going by the constitution. Of course, the, the, the National Assembly has a role to play. Um, in recent years, we haven't seen the effectiveness of the National Assembly in those areas, but Definitely, if the president nominates people who are uh, lacking in integrity, the National Assembly should step in and uh, reject those nominations and demand that uh, the proper people be put forward. But that would be uh, a significant you know, uh, disadvantage of having the kind of presidential system that we run in this country, because the president virtually has all the powers to do as he wishes to, if, despite the fact that he may be a player in the same game. So you have a player referee, which does not quite give uh, much uh, credibility to to the game itself. Uh, when absolutely, and one wonders why are we seemingly stuck in this? Because uh, the waste committee's recommendations uh, are now quite uh, more than a decade, and the, indeed the immediate past president and the incumbent president. Uh, seemed to have uh, vociferously supported some of the many of the recommendations of the Waste Committee when those recommendations were given. Uh, why is it that um, we are still stuck where we are? Well, un unfortunately, the, 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 the paradox in Nigeria is that the people who are meant to implement these recommendations or these laws are usually people that stand to benefit the most or lose out the most if these things are implemented. So there's always a skewed approach to implementing some of these things. And, you know, the national national interest isn't uh, a priority. It's usually personal interest, which makes these things look the way they, they eventually turn out. I, I would, my personal opinion would be that um, those recommendations were in the best interest of this country and they should be uh, uh, implemented 
as speedily as possible. But the president still has a, a huge say in all of this. And unless his interest isn't uh, particularly affected, we might not see this recommendation see the light of day. But there was a president. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm... Uh, maybe I'm too addicted to, to history, but this is even uh, recent uh, history. There was a president who, after he won, uh, after he was declared the winner at a swearing-in ceremony, he acknowledged there could be. We may sometimes have people with higher, uh, higher values and greater predisposition to to a country than selfish distance. Or am I just being delusional, maybe because I'm not a politician? <laughs> well, you're not being delusional. I think you're looking out for the best interests of the country. Uh, however, uh, we have noticed that uh, as time has gone on, uh, the quality of intervention when it comes from uh, top people in politics has, has gone down. You, you know, we're not having a lot of uh, national interest at play when decisions of this nature have to be uh, taken. But then again, all, all of this depends on how effective the National Assembly is, because the National Assembly should do its job to balance uh, the powers of the executive. I believe if the National Assembly puts down its foot, some of these things would, would, take, would take shape. However, we have a National Assembly who is more interested in being in bed with the executive and not offending uh, the president. So until something is done in that regard, we may have more of the same. Yeah, sorry for taking you in directions that you may have not uh, prepared for, but you alluding to the National Assembly now naturally uh, makes me want to say, uh, but you know what? This is the most, um, this is the most colorful, uh, no, 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 don't let me use the word colorful. This is the most uh, divergent in terms of uh, political parties. This is the most divergent National Assembly that we've had in, 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 in years or sessions of the National Assembly. So are you saying that this National Assembly as divergent as it is ostensibly on paper uh, may just be as supine as the uh, uh, previous uh, sessions, say the ninth session that was actually uh, often lampooned for uh, imbecility or being suffering. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I, I believe this national, this this particular crop of uh, legislators have been accused of uh, of being too close uh, to the to the executive. And as a matter of fact, we've heard stories of bills being passed without proper debates and. There seems to be an unnecessary uh, uh, inclination to please. Uh, it, it's still early days yet in this uh, National Assembly, while not uh, completely writing them off. But it, the, the, it doesn't look good when, when you look at the, the, the body language of the senators. I mean, look at, look at the economic crisis we have faced in this country. And we have a National Assembly that hasn't pronounced, hasn't said anything about what we're going through as a country. It doesn't give us, it doesn't give the electorate a lot of confidence that uh, they have the magic wand. The, uh, some of the unfortunate developments, making sure that uh, victors in elections uh, fully get litigations around their victories resolved before they are sworn in seems and sounds wonderful to the extant, extant uh, electoral art. Maybe uh, some ideas that you want to trade with them? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Could you repeat the question? I I'm saying, do you have some ideas that they should put in? Well, this is Absolutely. Your, this is your random I question. I have requirements for the petitioner to bring witnesses from each polling unit across the entire spectrum More of where the election is. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that doesn't help. That doesn't help at all. So the Electoral Act can be amended 
The same way we, we, we've heard from the justices of the Supreme Court about substantial compliance with the Electoral Act, meaning that the elections were, were okay and should not be nullified, we should have a, a situation where there could be substantial compliance with the, the requirement for witnesses if there has been widespread reports. It, you, you have been so engaging and you have really enriched the, uh, the program tonight. Thank you for for uh, your presence virtually. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Pleasure. Today's throwback. How the greedily ambitious opposition leaders have often crowned the numerically less popular national ruling parties. Any student of Nigeria's national electoral history can easily glean a very paradoxical phenomenon in the results of the previous and recent general elections in the country since the first federal or national polls in 1959. The opposition, quote unquote, usually out of the vaulting ambitions of its historic and present leaders, tend to unwittingly or gullibly crown the, unusual, crown the usually numerically unpopular winners. In the 1959 general elections, the elections which produced the first federal government in which Alaji Tafara Balewa of the MPC became the prime minister who controlled the executive powers relative to the titular or ceremonial office of the president. NCNC, Dr. Nnam Diazikwe's party, because of its popularity in both the eastern and western regions, scored the highest number of numerical votes, 2,594,577 votes, being 34.01% of total votes cast and 81 parliamentary seats. Action, Congress, uh, Action Group, AG, of Chief Obafemi Awolowo got 1,992,000 364 being 26.12% votes with 73 seats of those cast with, with 134 seats. The higher number of seats must have been because of the generous delineation of constituencies by the outgoing colonial government in the EU geographical space of the region. That notwithstanding, if the two leaders of the NCNC and AG had agreed to form a coalition government, the MPC, which had the lowest numerical votes, would have not been the party of government. In 1979, after the three military regimes of, uh, of Enrosi, Gowan, and Mutala Basujo, and at the dawn of the Second Republic, President Sheehu Shagari's MPN scored 5,688,857 votes, being 37.77% being of total votes cast. Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, and MPP of Chiefs Awolo and Nazikwe got 4,916,551 uh, being 29 percent and 2,822,523 uh, being 16 point some five percent respectively the unfortunate pattern often nourished by the it must be me and nobody else attitude of our politicians repeated itself in the february 20 in the february 25 2023 presidential ballot it was only in the national elections in which Ebola Ahmed Tinubu courted a consecutively electorally wasteful and frustrated Buhari that the strategic alignment of forces in the opposition's ranks defeated the ruling party. In conclusion, this synoptic historical excursion into our democratic past speaks to a brazen fact. At no time in our democratic history has the party in control of the federal government ever had the votes of 50% of the total registered voters. Not and that's it 
on the show tonight, I am Bola Hobart.